Do you really want to stay motivated? Do you really want to know how to push yourself when you feel like your gas tank's on empty? You ever feel like you are at a low to where you're just like, you know what, fuck it. Because <laughs> if you have, or if you are currently, or if you've done that before, then I got a method which has been my solution now for the absolute longest. Because believe it or not, it is truly human nature to get to a point where you just feel burnt. Where, you know, you hear that, that terminology or that explanation that they uh, refer to as spent. Like, you ever hear that? Like, man, I'm spent. Or, oh, man, I just can't do it no more. And it doesn't necessarily even need to be, uh, you know, combined with, like, physical endurance. I'm talking about mental endurance. You know, the real true reason for success is not just within endurance, but it actually has to do with mental endurance. You know, physical helps, but it's not as strong as how how mental endurance is. But anyway, I, I don't want to veer off the subject. The bottom line is, do you want to know how to stay motivated? I got you. Be sure to watch the entire video to make sure that this message and this lesson and this share you truly absorb. Because this could very well be the video that changes your life. What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I'm your host. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about one of the most common uh, goals that I think everyone has, you know, not just myself, but people who aren't even in sales, people who are just getting by, people who, you know, don't even work, right? This is just a basic common goal. And that goal is strive. How do you strive, you know, how do you, how do you win? How do you prevail? How do you upgrade, right? How do you upgrade your life, your experiences? How do you get the very things that you want? And ultimately, in the process of or in the journey of getting what you want, you'll have to have this one main thing constantly around you every day. And you might be like, oh, D, you talking about personal assistant? Bro, I got an assistant. Whatever, boo-boo. I'm not talking about a personal assistant. What I'm talking about is motivation. What you truly need to have around you at all times is motivation, right? And the reason why motivation is crucial is because, like I just said, there will be times where you feel spent. There will be times where you just feel like you can't go anymore. And, and it's very, very, very tempting to throw in the white towel, right? To literally basically just give up. Like, you know what? Man, fuck this shit, bro. I'll get it tomorrow or procrastinate even worse yet right and so motivation is a is an important factor and so I relied on motivation all the time you know even from when I was a kid in order to um, kind of match the attitude of other kids around me because other kids around me at the time you know they're just happy-go-lucky right they were excited and they were laughing and you know just they're very optimistic and I remember this a lot because I learned most of my lessons from childhood I grew up very fast and I wanted to be like that, you know, I wanted to be, I mean, it even affects me to this day. Sometimes I'm in a social setting and everyone's happy and excited and I find myself still using this method. And the method that I'm gonna cover with you is temporary and this is the main reason why I developed it and evolved it into something that was more permanent. And so temporary uh, fix back then when I was a kid, you know, I used to try to think of things to be excited for. Like, uh, like what am I gonna do this weekend? Or what am I going to do when I get to the mall, right? Or what am I going to do when this happens? And so I had to think about things that were coming up that I felt excited about. Because at the time, there were a lot of things that were coming up that I was not excited about. I wasn't excited to go home. I was not excited to, you know what I mean, go to my house, go to my room. I was not excited to go to school. I was not excited to look at the weekend because I had to figure shit out in a different way. And so, and so when you have a lot of things that you're dreading that's coming up, right, it's very hard to stay motivated. That shit, me, maybe it's just me, but I wear my emotion on my sleeve. You know what I mean? Like if I'm in a deep state of thought or I'm focused, people say I'm mad. You know, like um, I, I used to tell my team, like whenever I hire someone new, I used to say, hey man, I'm Asian. <laughs> my eyes are a bit slanted. Um, you know, most of the times because I was lit. But uh, the, <laughs> the main purpose why that, you know, um, my demeanor or my look or my facial expression might very well seem like I'm mad 
it, I'm just focused, baby, right? So I'm just, you know, I'm not mad. You can approach me. And I had to make I had to make that clear because a lot of people would hesitate on coming up to me. They felt that I was unapproachable. And maybe it's just because my instinctive reaction, when I'm focused, I'm like this, right? But people think I'm mad or I'm worried, but I'm not. But it's just the way I'm wired. And so anyway, it's a good side note and fun fact on how people react to certain things in a different way, right? Even though you don't intend that, intend that purpose or intend that reaction, people are just going to react the way they react. So you have to understand this and kind of adapt. But anyway, going back to a permanent form of motivation is because a permanent form of, of, of reason, of purpose, is what will what will develop the mental fortitude and the endurance that you need mentally to continue. Because when you get to a time where you're at your low or when you feel spent, you're gonna look for purpose, you're gonna look for reason, right? And the whole purpose of even wanting motivation is, is because motivation will get you going. Motivation is what we perceive to be that caffeine shot, right? It's like that extra cappuccino shot in your, in your coffee. But coffee is a good example because coffee ultimately wears off, right? Well, so does motivation. And so even though motivation is necessary to have around, understand that it's temporary. And so ultimately what you're looking for is not motivation. You're, you're simply looking for purpose, right? And so let me give you, you know, an example. Like, um, you know, I have a lot of content already and one of the original videos that I put out had to do with the, probably the greatest lesson that my mentor ever taught me. And that lesson was people will do things for three primary reasons. And that's love, fear, and status. You know, I said survival, but survival status, same thing. But ultimately, love, fear, and status is the primary purpose that everyone has. The things you do right now for the things you love, the things you do right now for the things you fear. The things you do right now is for your status, get it? And so that ultimately becomes your purpose, and that's very vague, it's very general to each his own, right? So you have to apply it for yourself, while at the same time, just like how people reacted to me if I'm focused and they think I'm mad, you have to understand that people will react differently than you. And so another example, so you can absorb this message, is like the economy, right? People right now that even I'm surrounded by, are scared as shit because they're in sales and I work in real estate and you know we commonly when things look familiar will associate it with the worst case scenario right like so for example you know there's all this media talk about a market crash a real estate bubble man there ain't no real estate bubble the hell ain't no recession about to happen <laughs> real estate game is strong bro what happens is though is that just like anything it has ups and downs and you have boosts of production and then sometimes it dwindles down it just slows down it just is what it is and what happens though is that when media and other people react in different ways and people start seeing companies close down they start to think oh no we're back in 2008 again and so people react differently and ultimately how they react also influences how we react and so that's why we sometimes feel spent we sometimes feel you know unmotivated and therefore we'll look on ig for that quote for that meme for that video for that for that rah rah you know that you get in like a rally or maybe you got a music or a song that gets you kind of focused back into motivation but when that song is over or when that coffee or that energy drink wears off the hell do you got to rely on boo boo besides a sugar crash what you have to rely on is love fear and status and so that ultimately is your permanent source of motivation and so if you ever wake up or if you get to a point where you're just like man d yo man fuck this bro i'm spent i don't want to fuck with it i want you to know that that's not a sign of weakness it's natural and so when you get to that state and you will get to that state. I get to that state, bro. But when you get to that state, you gotta isolate yourself. Because what happens is, you know, you can't necessarily focus around you for the things that are happening around you. You have to isolate yourself and really, really, really dig deep on those three pillars of what actually create action for you is what is 
truly going to motivate you is lo what you love, what you fear, and what your status is. <laughs> and so you might be like, D, real quick, can you fucking explain, bro, what does love, fear, and, and status? What the hell are you talking about, bro? And this is what I'm talking about. Whether you got kids or you don't got kids, whether you got a house or you don't got a house, whether you got a car or you don't got a car, you're probably on your way to, right? So you're trying to find ways on how to get to it. And so you might love your kids or maybe you don't have kids or you might love your environment. You got a house or you got this dope condo or you got a view of the beach, whatever, to each his own, right? People got different um, things that they love. But whatever that one thing is, you're in love with it. And I want you to pay attention to what you would do to protect it, right? Like I'll fucking stand in front of a, 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 a moving train for my kids. I will, I will strip butt naked for my kids and, and literally go to work, right? Like that's what I, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not really going to do it, but we'll, people will be showing up at my work, but like, it's here. <laughs> no, but for real though, think about the things that you love and what you would ultimately do for those things that you love. Think about also what you fear. Think about how, what you would do to avoid the things you fear, right? Like you might fear failure, so you do anything at all costs to not fail. You might fear, uh, you know, disappointing someone, so you do everything at all costs, including lie, just not to disappoint. So there, are, you make moves basically, right, to, for the things you fear. And then status. Status is also the re main reason why people front. People wearing Gucci flip-flops, but drive a fucking, you know, like a, what are those gerbil cars, man? I forgot what those gerbil cars are, but you know what I'm talking about. Those little gerbil-ass cars and shit. The, the gerbil be like, <laughs> you bubble those. Anyway, the car's like 10 grand or smart car or whatever, but you got Gucci flip-flops on. And um, and it's it's because of status, right? And so and so status is something that we protect. These The status is something that we will make moves for to protect right or to avoid because we don't want to let people know our true status or we don't want people to think that our status is weak or we don't want people to think that our status is too bougie bourgeois right again to each his own but primarily it's those three pillars so love fear and status how what are your three pillars so if this is your first time subscribing or watching, please subscribe, hit that, hit that bell so that you're alerted of any topics that come up in the future. And, and uh, comment below, let me know by putting the timestamp, right? Like the, the time within this video, what your, what your favorite part was, what your takeaway was, and comment what your takeaway is. You know, I read all the comments and I reply back personally. That's not my assistant, that's me. So you wanna communicate with me? You wanna let me know that these videos are reaching you and helping provide an impact to you if you're driving right now i get it but at some point hit me up hit me up on facebook hit me up on ig you know hit me up on linkedin hit me up anywhere and everywhere you find hashtag sales remastered just search in the search engine look for it or search my name and drop by let me know you know that this is this is not only helping you but it also kind of helped you look at things in a different way because if if right now before this video if the only thing you were relying on was that five dollar cup of coffee or the only thing you were really relying on was that playlist or that one gary v video <laughs> right then ultimately what's going to happen is that video or that caffeine rush or that meme or you know that that feeling of motivation is going to end but what will stay with you throughout your entire life i mean it may change it may evolve but it will always be there is love, fear, and status. And those are the three things that are primarily going to push you to take action. Those are the three things that are truly going to motivate you. Get it? I hope this video helps and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. I had some dreams, I said some things to you.